We've made some great progress with our customers list. We're able to have companies, we're able to associate our customers to companies, and we're able to retrieve the relationship between customers and companies. I want to spend some time refactoring this view to a more traditional form for creating customers and then having a view to be able to view all of my customers as opposed to this mixed view where we have a form at the top on our customers at the bottom. And through all of that, we're going to learn some more Laravel basics. So let's get right to it. So the first topic is RESTful controllers. RESTful means that it follows a particular pattern of method names to actions. And when you follow this pattern, it ensures that your controllers stay nice, clean, and short and overall improves your code dramatically. So I want to show you this in the documentation first, and then we're going to start digging through our code and refactoring some of it to follow this convention. So let's visit the Laravel docs right now. Let's go to laravel.com slash docs. And here we are. And then if we do a search here at the top and say controllers and resource controllers, that's what we're looking for. And we scroll down here just a little bit. Here we are. So these are the actions. There are seven of them in total. And this is the pattern that you will follow. Here's the verb. Here's what the URI would look for. And then you look at the action, meaning the name of the method in the controller, and then the route name. Now the route name only applies if you use a resource in your web routes file, which we have not talked about yet. So go ahead and ignore the routes name just for now. So we have these seven methods here. Let's take a look at the first one. If we said an index, an index sounds a lot like we've been calling a list. Let's check it out. If we go to our customer's controller, so this list method here is basically the index method because the index method, what it does is it basically gives you a list of the entire resource. So let's refactor that now. So instead of list, it needs to be called index. And then let's visit our web routes file and change this from list to index. All right, let's hit refresh. And of course, it's still working. However, if you really looked at this and you look down at the second one, the second one should be something like customers slash create. And the create is what will contain the form that we have. So we need to split this off because right now this top section is our create view. So let's take care of that now. Now, before we create that, I do want to do one more change here. And it's this views. Our current view directory structure is to have these internals and then dot customers. But I find it a lot easier if you follow the exact same convention. So instead of internals, I'm going to say customers because that's the name of our controller. And instead of customers, I'm going to say index. That way it follows the exact same convention. So let's go into resources, views, and let's change that now. I'm going to make a new directory first. We're going to refactor this in steps. So follow along. Directory, we'll say this is going to be customers. And you could do uppercase, you could do all lowercase. There's no real convention on this. I'm going to stick to all lowercase, but you could do a capital C if you like. So in my customers, I need what we are now calling internals customers. So I obviously need to move that into my customers now and I need to rename that. So let's rename that refactor rename and this is going to be called index. Okay, we can actually get rid of this internals directory. We're no longer using it. So let's get rid of it. Delete. Okay, so now we need to change this. This is no longer internals customers. This is customers dot index. So that follows the same convention customers index inside the customers controller in the index method. That makes sense. All right. So now let's start talking about this create method. So we know we're going to need a public function called create and create simply going to return a view of some sort, of course. And the view, as you may have guessed, is customers dot create. So let's create that view. Now we'll say new file create dot blade dot PHP. And what needs to go in here is basically just the top half of what we've been calling index. So I'm going to actually copy the whole thing. We'll bring it in here and let's edit it from here on down. This is basically our index so we can get rid of that. And so we have our form and let's change the title to add new customer. 
makes a little bit more sense. Let's change the title to add new customer as well. And I think we're good on that one. Now on the index, we can get rid of the form altogether and we can get rid of that. And what we need to do is of course, we need to add a link. So I'll just add it here for now. We'll say a P tag, anchor tag. And where is this gonna go? Well, this is gonna go to customers create. And we don't have a web route for that just yet, but we'll take care of that in just a couple of seconds. So add new customer. Let's take care of that route. Customers index, let's create a new one, customers slash create. And this goes to the create method. Now, just to recap, back in the documentation, this is what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to have this create action, meaning a method with the name of create, and we want to route it using a URL that has the resource name. In the case of the documentation, they're using photos as the example. In our case is customers. So we'll have slash customers slash create, and it's going to be a get method. So we have our get method and it's going to be customers slash create and we have our customers controller with our create. All right, let's see if that refactor was successful. All right, so I hit refresh. I have my index, which we're gonna work on in just a couple of seconds, but if I hit add new customer, it says undefined variables companies. Okay, we missed something. Let's go back to our controller, and sure enough, if we go back to our view, it depends on companies to be able to give us a list of companies to choose from. So we forgot to bring that over. So I'm gonna bring this line into this method, just moving that. And of course, we don't have to compact companies anymore. And so here we'll say compact companies. And let's give that another go. Aha, there we go. Let's try to add a customer now. New customer, some email, active, add customer. And it did redirect us. As you notice here, we went to customers slash customers. So we can no longer simply return back from our store method, because if we do, then of course we'd end up in a nested resource of some sort. So let's actually return a redirect and we're gonna redirect back to customers. All right, let's see what's going on here. If we go back to customers, Ah, it looks like companies is a dependency that it needed. Let's see why that is. Let's go to my index view. That's right. So we have this for each company. We had added this just to prove that we could have the relationship in the reverse order. I'm gonna tackle the companies as a separate controller altogether. So I will delete that code, which leaves us just the add customers, and then we'll have these two columns, the active and inactive. Let's see what we get now. So if we took a look at our create method, so our form action up until this point, I've been using this customers, right? But now that we're inside a customers slash create, that's why it's redirecting us to the wrong place. So I actually just need to put a slash in front of customers and that should fix it for us. Let me go ahead and hit refresh on this page and let's add our new customer now. So new customer email at email.com, add customer, and there we go. So we are working again, but now we have our create method, which is helping us to keep our controller in check. And here it is. Here's our create method, nice and simple, two lines. And now we have our index method, which we're gonna work on in just a second. And then we have our store method. So let's get back to this index method. So I no longer wanna have this active customers and inactive customers. So I will actually revert back to just having customers, equals app customer and let's just fetch all of them at this point let's get rid of these two lines let's get rid of this all together it'll just be customers from here on out and get rid of that all right let me go back to the index view what i want to do is a more traditional table style for my customers so we'll do this the bootstrap way so let me actually wrap this inside for each customers as customer and hopefully this flow is starting to get a little easier to understand and follow as we're doing it and that's the beauty of this i'm going to do this over and over until it kind of clicks in so just keep following along as i'll repeat this over and over and you'll see the process how it evolves and it starts to make sense we'll have a row 
for each of my customers. And the first thing I want to do is maybe have a column of two and inside there we'll have the customer ID and then let's get rid of all this. I don't need any of that. So we'll get rid of that. Our customer ID, then let's have the customer's name. We'll say that is customer name. And then let's have the customer's company name. So customer, remember we're gonna fetch the relationship, company, no parentheses, name. So we got their company name. And then, so we have two plus four plus four. We need two more. So let's do two more and maybe we'll call this the active just to see if they are active or not. All right, let's check it out on the browser and see if we made any mistakes. Back to my customer list. Looks like we have sort of the same error in our navigation. Let's go back and fix that as well. So navigation. Yep, it needs to be slash about slash contact and slash customers. All right, so let's go back, refresh customer list. There we go. So we have our customers, we got their ID, their name, and their company. And then we have this one and zero, which we obviously know represents active or inactive. I'm going to show you a really cool trick. And I remember learning this when I first started in Laravel and I was so excited about it. Hopefully you find this as useful as I did. So if we want to convert this one to an action, your typical approach may be to say something like, all right, so if my customer is active, right, and we could do a shorthand notation on this, we can say, well, if it equals to one, then that means it's active. And if it equals to zero, then that means it's inactive, okay? Would that work? It sure would. That works 100%. But if you have more than two statuses, that breaks down right away. It works good if it's just active and inactive. When you have active, in progress, and other things and other labels for other statuses, it just doesn't work. So I'm going to revert that. That's not how we're going to do it. So how we're actually going to do it is we're going to be using the model to do it. So let's go to my customer model. And here's the trick. Laravel has a feature called accessors and mutators. And accessors and mutators will allow us to interject any call that we want and do something to it before it either displays it on a page or saves it back into the database. So let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna add a new method here, and a lot like the scope, this is gonna be worded in a very specific way so that it works. So to make an accessor, it's get, and then the column name, so in our case, it's active. So get active, and then attribute. So get active attribute. So this is going to give us the attribute as a parameter. And what I can do here is I can actually generate through an array and figure out which one it is. Let's do it all in line. So we'll do a big return statement and we'll say it's going to be an array. And my array is going to say if it's zero, we know that means inactive. And if it equals one, then we know it is active. And then through the magic of PHP, we can actually call attribute on that. So that will return the proper attribute for us. And to prove it, I'm going to comment this out right now. Hit save, go back, refresh, and you see we're back to 1011. And then let's go ahead and save that again. And there we are. So we now have a singular place where active becomes one and inactive becomes zero and it is inside our model. And that makes sense because the model, remember, is the one that's in charge of a customer. So this class, if you wanna know anything about our customer, this is the class where it goes. Instead of having to repeat that over and over every single time, we have to use this active column. From here on out, it will always output inactive and active instead of zero and one. Just to check that everything's still working, let's go ahead and add a new customer. And obviously, we still have our active and inactive column. So let's do another person, funky email, add customer, and there we are. We're still getting active and inactive and everything is working. Again, we're following those restful verbs that we found here in the documentation. Obviously, the store method would be the next in line. And the store method, we actually already implemented the right way. So I'll just review it. So here it is. We have a store method and the store method redirects back to our index method right now. 
Generally speaking, a store method redirects back to the show method, which is the one that actually shows you the newly made resource. And that makes a little bit of sense. If you added a new customer, you probably want to be redirected to that customer's detail page and not the index of all of your customers. So we'll work on getting a show view for our customers in the next lesson. But let's just wrap up the store method by going to the web routes. And we see that we have a route with a method of post to customers and it's going to a store method. And of course, here it is. It follows the convention post and is routing to just the base name of your resource and is using an action of store. So the one that we're going to handle next is this one here, this show method. So stick around. In the next episode, we're going to handle the show view.